In the early 50s, a young man, an amazing athlete, played baseball for the University of Utah. And he was pretty good. So good, in fact, that he earned himself the nickname Rapid Robert. That is, until he lost four 1-0 ball games in a row and got a new nickname, Hard Luck Hales. Ready to quit, he approached his coach and told him he was no good and the team was better off without him. The coach told him to smarten up, get tough, and work harder, so that at the end of the next game, they would be the team up a run with the win. So that's what he did, and Rapid Robert returned. But this isn't the story of a baseball player. This is a story about a man who was even more talented off the field than he was on. Even when the going got tough for Elder Robert D. Hales, he never quit. Not in baseball, not in his family, and not in the church. And not in his life as he endured to a faithful end on October 1st of this year. I, like many of you, have been a lifelong faithful and active member of the church, and I've always appreciated and loved learning from the words of the apostles. Elder Hales's messages have spoken to me and touched my heart on many occasions, and I have a deep reverence for the life he lived and the faith he shared. He is remembered and revered by all whose lives he touched, as an apostle of the Lord and as a friend. To honor this great man, I will discuss his early life, his marriage, and his apostleship in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Born in New York City on August 24, 1932, Robert Hales's life of faithful start service start started from a young age. With Christ-like parents bringing him up in truth and righteousness, Elder Hales reflected often on how their quiet examples of faith strengthened his own testimony. As they served in the church, they invited him along to help where he could, even making driving his Relief Society president mother to distribute welfare to the poor and needy a condition of getting his license. These early experiences developed his testimony of charity and the church welfare program, a testimony he needed for the capacities he served in as a general authority for the LDS church. While studying radio broadcasting and continuing to play for the baseball team at the University of Utah, Robert Hales returned home one summer in between school years to his home in New York, and he met a girl. In describing their meeting, he said, I saw her for only a moment, but she made an impression on me. The next Sunday, I was at the sacrament table in my ward and looked up to see her in the congregation. I went on my first date with her, went home, and told my father that I had met the girl I was going to marry. It was fairly light, late, and he sat up right in bed and said, don't put all your eggs in one basket. I never went out with another girl. After I met Mary. That's how simple it was. I knew. He made the right choice. His wife not only supported him in his education as he received his master's in business administration from Harvard, but also as he served in a number of different callings that have taken them and their two sons around the world. In fact, in a devotional address at Brigham Young University, in November of 1976, Elder Hales recounted his experience as he was called to serve as the Elders Corps president while attending Harvard. Worrying about the workload he would be taking on, failing out of school and how this would affect their marriage and family life, he went home to discuss the decision with his wife. She told him, without hesitation, Bob, I would rather have an active priesthood holder than a man who holds a master's degree from Harvard. We'll do them both. He returned home not long after to find that she had boarded up a corner of the house to make a room where he could study and work, where he, in her own words, could get good grades and be a good Elders Corps president. His faithful life supported him as their family moved from country to country for Elder Hales' work, taking them as far as England, Spain, and Germany. The Lord used their constant relocation as an opportunity for Elder Hales to serve all across the world as a bishop, a branch president, a counselor in stake presidencies, an assistant to the Twelve, a mission president of the London England Mission, the presiding bishop of the church, and finally as a member of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles, a calling he held until his passing a short month ago. While serving as presiding bishop, Elder Hale suffered a heart attack. Following his recovery, he recounted his experience in general conference, thanking the church members for their prayers on his behalf and expressing his testimony, saying, Throughout that experience, there is one particular feeling that began inside of me almost immediately and intensified as time went on and became overpowering during my illness and during my recovery as, and remains with me still. I became overwhelmed with a feeling of deep gratitude for the goodness of God. My deepest gratitude is for the atoning sacrifice of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The atonement is the foundation upon which all gospel truths reside. 
That heart attack was over 25 years ago, and Elder Hales continued to serve faithfully in the church, taking those early life lessons he learned from his parents and from baseball, and never quitting as he endured to the end. His final message to the church, read posthumously by Elder Neil L. Anderson, just hours following Elder Hale's death, are particularly meaningful, knowing the humility and faith of this great man. In the address he wrote, When we choose to have faith, we are prepared to stand in the presence of God. After the Savior's crucifixion, he appeared only to those who had been faithful in the testimony of him while they lived in mortality. Those who rejected the testimonies of the prophets could not behold the Savior's presence nor look upon his face. Our faith prepares us to be in the presence of the Lord. Elder Hales was a man among men, serving diligently as a father, husband, friend, and leader. I pay homage to the man who humbly wore out his life in the service of God, even more worn out than the baseball I hold in my hand. To the man whose words and actions lifted his family, friends, and the entire church. To the man whose faith prepared him to stand in the presence of the Lord. To Hard Luck Hales and Rapid Robert. <laughs>